Hey guys, welcome back to My Trick RC. Today we're real excited to introduce you to our latest kit for the TRX4. It's based on our DG1 Dragon lighting controller. And what makes this kit unique and, and cool is because it's based on the DG1 Dragon, you can have multiple light bars, high power headlights, you'll be able to add in rock lights. These are will be sold separately, we'll have them up for sale very soon. Uh, as well as you could add spotlights, like to the rear of the vehicle, or on the sides to the roll cage. However you want to customize it, this system will give you that flexibility to add on and make it, build it the way that you want. So what's included in this kit <clears throat> is the five inch light bar, high power headlights, and all of the high power lights will be, you can adjust their brightness. There's three levels of brightness. We'll go through that, we'll show that to you. Um, okay, so in this kit as well is the front running lights, the amber running lights, the rear tail lights, as well as reverse. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to install this kit and set it up and configure it exactly the way that it is here. One of the great things about this kit is its simplicity. Because of all the LEDs are mounted on these circuit boards, it really minimizes the wiring as well as makes installation into the existing body super easy. Because this is all on one single harness, there's only three connectors that will plug into your Dragon controller. One for the high power headlights, one for the reverse, and one for the running lights. The Dragon controller itself comes with two cables. This is a power cable. This allows you to take power directly from the balance port of your battery. If your battery doesn't have a balance port, we do offer separately uh, a, a cable like this that'll let you take the power directly from your battery terminal. We offer this in a Traxxas, a Deans, and a, TR, uh, a Tamiya configurations. And the Dragon controller also comes with a servo cable. This is going to plug into your black connector and then your motor servo is going to plug into here and then this will plug into the motor port on your receiver and this allow us, allows us to get our reverse signal so we know when to turn on the reverse lights. The kit also includes some 3D printed parts. These are reflectors for the headlights. In a separate video we'll show you how to sand and paint these to get a nice uh, look, a nice scale look once the kit is installed. The kit also comes with some uh, gaskets to help reduce water and dust from getting into the headlight assemblies as well as the tail lights. And uh, the kit also includes a 5 inch light bar with some 3D printed brackets that are spe specially designed to make the installation of the light bar super simple into the existing uh, roll cage without any cutting. We just use the existing hardware. In fact this entire kit uses all of the existing hardware that's on your TRX body. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the disassembly of the body so you can kind of see how, you, how we go about that. The first step in the disassembly process is to remove the wheel fairings um, all the way around the vehicle. So this one here, this one here. <clears throat> Once we do that, this whole entire center piece is actually gonna come out. On the rear, there are two additional screws, but on the front, uh, as soon as you disassemble these, this whole front assembly will just come right out. It's not necessary to even touch these other screws here. So we've, we started disassembling this already, and you'll notice that there's only uh, a lot fewer actual screw locations than there are places where it looks like there should be a screw. A lot of these are just little dummy filler pieces. So uh, just be conscious of that when you start the job. Um, so you don't waste your time trying to unscrew something that isn't a screw. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and fully disassemble these and then we'll show you how it comes apart. Okay, so as we finish this last one, we've now removed all of the wheel fairings and you'll see this piece just pops right out of there like so. In the back, uh, we do need to remove these other two screw locations. Do that real quick. These are kind of unique screws. They look a little different than the other. Just keep those set to the side. Okay, pop this right out. There we go. So now we've basically exposed 
the tail lights as well as the headlights assembly. Let's go ahead and pop these guys out next. Disassembly of the rear light cluster is as simple as removing or unscrewing just this one screw. The light cluster will come right out or go in just like this. So we applied a gasket to the, the little circuit board before we put our lens on there. And then we just popped it right in place and put the screw right into it. Everything drops right in. It's all custom designed to fit this body. So this really is a, a very customized kit specifically for this build. Okay, let's take a quick look at the headlight clusters. The, these are just gonna be three screw locations. One, two, three. Let's see how that looks. Okay, we're just finishing up on screwing this assembly here. Should pop right out. Okay, there you go. So this is how this assembly looks. It's a, kind of a three-part assembly. The first part is our reflector lens, and we applied our gasket after we did our, our sanding and painting. We put the gasket actually on this part, so the lens assembly that's in the TRX body, you can just keep it there. This will just butt right up against there. This has a nice flat surface for the circuit board to go onto and the circuit board cluster will just pop right into here, like so. Should have matching aligning pins. So it looks like this, you kind of see there. And then lastly, we have this little bracket. You'll notice it has a little D on it. This is for driver's side. This happens to be the driver's side. Each one is labeled driver's side and passenger side. We're just gonna go ahead, like I said, this is, these are the same screws that came out of the, the cluster that was in here. Just put this right back. It really is this simple. We chose to wrap our wires to give it a little bit more of a finished look, but you can see how we installed it. We used one of these mounts here with the zip tie and the Dragon controller. We, we decided to stick it into this position. We ran our mode button up this side here so that it would be pretty easy to access. We wouldn't have to lift the body too much to get to it. And our power cable is coming off on this side. So the reverse lights or the tail lights you can see look like this. Very, very clean and minimal installation. With the light system all installed, we're gonna go ahead and put our wheel wells back in place. So we just put it right back in there, found the correct uh, wheel fairing, and now we're just gonna go ahead and start to screw it back in place. Okay, now that we have all of the wheel fairings and fender wells back installed, front and rear, basically the system is all in there, um, let's show you how we attach the light bar. So the roll cage comes with this bar across the front and that bar is held in in just two places, one at each end. And we're going to go ahead and unscrew that screw. This screw uses a two millimeter socket, whereas most of the other screws that we've been uh, dealing with so far use just a one and a half millimeter socket, just an FYI. So once we unscrew this bar, we'll show you the 3D printed brackets that came with the light bar get mounted like this. So you can kind of see how this little leg terminates into the light bar here. We use two screws to attach the bracket to the light bar such that this little guy is pointed inwards. Then the the bracket has this little hole right here and if necessary you might want to take a body reamer or something and just open it up a little bit but the same screws that we just took out are the are what we'll use to attach these brackets and put this thing right back. It's really fast and really simple. Okay, the screw looks like it fell out here. 
that aligned properly. And in it goes. Okay, it's really just that straightforward. So that's how it looks. Fully installed. The light bar kind of, or the roll cage kind of terminates into the light bar. Looks pretty sleek. Now, as far as the connections go to the Dragon controller, this port here, the very end one, is where we connected the running lights. Reverse lights go into the second part. We put our headlights and our light bar into these first two ports. These first two ports will go through all three levels of brightness. These two ports only turn on at the highest level of brightness. So if you want to, you can kind of do like low beams, high beams, and then full brightness rock running lights. We sometimes configure our trucks like that as well. So this is how it looks. Let's take a look at the chassis now and see how the, the Dragon connects into that. The first step to install the Dragon power cable is to remove the covers over the receiver. And we're going to use the same 2 millimeter socket here. There's three screws for the top cover and then two additional screws for the lower cover. All right, let's go ahead and remove the covers and take a look inside here. So it looks like there's a lot of wiring in here. We actually have our adapter cable already installed. Let me go ahead and unplug it. You'll notice that the where I just unplugged was port number two. That is the motor receiver port. So that's where this guy belongs. And plugged into this are the motor servo as well as the Dragon power cable. And the way to make sure you get the orientation correct on this is these two little pins should be facing up on both connectors. So when I plug this guy in, you can still see the pins. When I plug this guy in, the pins are facing the same way. So actually the first thing we did is we took uh, this cable and we fed both the red connector and the, the black connector underneath this little ridge right here. So there's a little wall and you can feed the cable underneath that up into the other side. That's exactly how we did. And we just left the red cable loose. We didn't connect it to anything. We're not going to be able to use the third channel switching on this vehicle unfortunately. Although the transmitter has a lot of channels, they've used all of the channels on the various servo motors. We tried tapping into those servo motors to see if we could still use them to do a third channel switching, but for some reason on this vehicle it doesn't really work like it does on other vehicles. Anyway, so this is the basic wiring uh, here. The only other leg is for power, and here is where we connect to the balance port of the battery. That's how we did it. So this is the our, our battery's balance port. We just connected this right here. Connected this guy to power. And now as soon as I plug the Dragon into this, the Dragon will, will be powered up. All right, let's go ahead and put this back together and we'll show you how to set the drive mode on the, the Traxxas ESC. To configure the Traxxas ESC so that the reverse lights work correctly, we want to set this to drive mode number five. And the way we do that, the first thing we want to do is we want to turn on our transmitter, make sure that's powered up, okay. Then at initial power up, we'll press and we'll keep holding the button until it turns red. Then it's going to start blinking. We want to wait until it blinks five times consecutively. So it did one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and then five blinks. Okay, at that point you can let go. The ESC is now configured correctly. So as soon as we plug the body into the uh, power cable, the, the Dragon should power up and have everything working properly. Okay, we connected our Dragon controller to the connector. So we're gonna apply power. And then pretty quickly we're going to go ahead and turn on the speed controller. 
And we want to try and turn this guy on before the, the dragon powers up fully. It takes a little time for the dragon to boot up. What it's doing, it's, it's actually looking at the battery to see what kind of uh, battery it's connected to. Well, actually, our dragon wasn't powered because it wasn't connected. So when you see the dragon turning on, it, it'll go through a, a series of blinks. It's detecting what kind of battery is attached to it. So it has uh, battery protection. It'll automatically turn off the lights once the battery gets too low, thereby protecting your battery from being overly discharged. It's a safety feature that's integrated into the Dragon controller. Okay, so everything is turned on. We should have lights. Let's uh, turn on. Yes, we do have lights. Let's make sure our reverse lights are working. If we can get it here, get the right controller. Okay, so we're not getting the reverse lights. So what we want to do, if that ever happens, we're going to turn off truck. We're going to disconnect the dragon. We're going to plug it in and we're going to turn on the truck before the dragon fully boots up. Okay, let's see how that works. So as soon as the lights come on, we should be able to check it. And now we have reverse. So that completes our installation of our DG1 system into our TRX4. If you like this video, don't forget to uh, follow us on YouTube as well as check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, we'll see you on the trail.